Welcome to the AACS Daily News for September 16, 2016. The opponents of a proposed natural gas compressor station in Rehoboth will hold public information sessions over the next two weeks. The sessions have been put together by the organization called Citizens Against the Rehoboth Compressor Station. They argue that the proposed station is not needed and poses health risks to Rehoboth, Attleboro and Seekonk residents. They spoke to us about their upcoming events. My name is Tracy Manzala and I'm a spokesperson for the Citizens Against the Rehoboth Compressor Station. Uh, the acronym is CARCS, C-A-R-C-S. The health impact zone, which is the blue area, and the evacuation zone, which is roughly a two-mile area around that. You can see that Attleboro has two um, schools squarely in that area. The story that has been woven by Spectra Energy is that we need the extra fuel up here, the gas, to keep the lights on, basically, in New England. Our Attorney General did a study in November of uh, 2015, which proved that to be false. We have a 1% growth rate, and we're already 64% dependent upon natural gas for our electricity in our state which is a very high dependence. Most states in the U.S. are around 33 uh, percent uh, dependent upon natural gas. So we already have an over-dependence upon a finite fossil fuel. And as you can see, our electric rates are quite high. What they're trying to tell us is our rates will go down. First, they tried to actually make us pay for this pipeline infrastructure, which was shot down in the Supreme Judicial Court in Massachusetts recently. So now Spectra is, along with National Grid and Eversource Energy, looking for other means uh, to fund this pipeline. So that just because the tax has been beaten doesn't mean at all that this pipeline won't be moving forward. Spectra Energy needs this pipeline to export their gas. There was legislation that was passed, I think it was February of this year, which gave them an open door to export through Canada. And Massachusetts, uh, our area, happens to be the highway to get there. They say this is for us, we've established that we don't need it, and through conservation efforts, bolstering our houses, insulating our homes, uh, not being as frivolous with the energy, combined with new strides with renewables, we have this thing under control. We don't need more gas line infrastructure, which is dangerous, particularly with the fact that our pipeline infrastructure is already in the neighborhood of 60 years old. It's mostly cast iron and bare steel and those are the, the systems that are most prone to accidents. So Spectra Energy will come in and say they have a great safety record with what they call the Algonquin, which is the existing pipeline, but what they're trying to do is retrofit the Algonquin pipeline to accommodate 35% more high pressure fracked gas from uh, the Marcellus Shell in, in Pennsylvania. And this is an accident waiting to happen. These pipelines are underground, it's too expensive for them to dig them up and check them out and see where the leaks and where the problems are. And there are documented 20,000 leaks in our state presently as we speak. In Attleboro, I believe there's 99 that are considered bad enough to need to fix them. We have some meetings coming up in uh, the next few days that are important for everyone to participate in. The first is on uh, Monday, the 19th at 7 p.m. at the Dighton Rehoboth Regional High School, where we have Dr. Norgard, who is a pediatrician and an expert on the health impacts and dangers of compressor stations. It's almost more of an Attleboro issue than it is a Rehoboth issue. It's just that it's on our land. It affects Seekonk equally as we all have schools and children and residents that are directly impacted by the proposed compressor station. Another event that will be coming up is an event that's sponsored by our Board of Selectmen in Rehoboth where Spectre Energy, the company that is responsible for this pipeline expansion, will be coming uh, to our senior center in Rehoboth. This is at uh, 7 p.m on September 26th. They'll be addressing some of the questions that were pre-sent. That's it for today's update. For ACS News, I'm Austin Ricketts.